What's up guys? So in last week's video, I showed you how to create this animated kind of UI widget for your currency systems. And I felt that would be worth expanding a little bit to handle persistence as well as more use cases. So we'll take a look at that here today. Okay, so now over in VS Code, we're gonna take a look at all the changes that are made in this version, as well as, you know, kind of what they're doing, what they mean, and uh, some insights on how to change them yourself if you need to. So starting off, we have probably the most requested thing, which was uh, how to deal with persistence for this system. Like first off, we've got this map here, which is a mapping from players to some player currency data class, which is a persistible data class that just stores a version number as well as the amount of currency a player has. So every time a player joins the game, it's going to check if they have an entry in this map. If they don't, it's going to add one. So that way, every player that joins will be given zero currency at the start and that will save to that player every time they leave and join the game. Then we have some utility functions here, one for a constructor to build the class. If you want to change any individual fields, there's not too many, so it's not too useful in this case. But Then there's a get currency data function, which is a failable uh, function that will really just return the player's currency data. Then we have this add currency function. This is pretty much where you're going to be changing the player's currency, as you'd expect. So on the player, you can just call dot add currency with the amount of currency that's being changed. This can be positive or negative. That's how you'll do addition and subtractions. And it pretty much just works by getting their previous data and then setting their data to that old data, but with the currency field changed to be the previous amount of currency you had plus the change in currency. So that way the delta will be applied to your saved amount and update it. All right, getting into the changes to the actual um, currency system. So this is going to make it a lot more uh, useful as a currency system itself, especially for those who aren't too familiar with, with Burst and just kind of want an out of the box solution that will work kind of in UFN. So to start out, we have just an abstract class that is just expecting you to define a get amount method that will return a float. This is just to make sure that any classes you define for granting currency methods are able to return a float amount. So this is really just going to be used to define, I mean, all that I could think of were two different methods like constant and uh, range. So constant, you'll just define how much money it's going to give you. And then you'll call get amount and it'll just return that amount. And then likewise for range, you'll specify a range of money that it can grant you. This can be positive or negative for both of these. And then the get amount function will call a random float between the range it gave you and return that. So this is for defining how much money your triggering methods are going to give you, whether it's a constant amount or it's like a random amount in a range. Uh, then you have the triggering methods themselves. So it starts off with an abstract class. So every single one is going to have a grant method, which is one of these, either constant or a range granting method. So that just means every time you define a triggering method, which could be, say, like a button or like a trigger device or like walking into a mutator zone, stuff like that, you'll have to assign it a granting method. So it'll either be like It'll give you a set amount or a random amount in a range. Then you'll have to define a subscribe function for every class that you make of this. All it does is takes in a function that takes in an agent and a float and returns a void. So this is pretty much you pass in a callback function. That's essentially all this is doing. That you want to be called whenever you trigger your method here. Then we have some other kind of utility functions. This one just to like flush out all of your callbacks that you had, as well as all the devices that you subscribed. You probably really won't use these all too much, if at all. Uh, they're just there for kind of utility sake. Then for every class you define that is a child of the trigger method, you'll have to create an init function that will handle kind of just the setup for it. So typically that'll just be setting up the subscriptions to the devices in question. Then you'll have an array of callback functions, which is just an array of, you know, the functions that you will be passing into your subscribe function that you define. And then you have a list of your cancelables. These are the subscriptions that you get from when you subscribe to your device's initial events at the beginning. So then we have our first actual trigger method that is um, defined using this trigger method class. So it is just a actual trigger. So it's referencing an actual trigger device that you would place down in the world. So first off, you'd have an array of all of your triggers. So you just fill it up with every trigger that you want to activate this grant method. And we'll look at some examples in the world of that so you can get a better understanding of what's actually happening. So then we'll have our init function. All it does is it 
overrides the initialization function that we defined in the abstract class and gives it a definition. So all it does is it goes through each trigger in the triggers array and sets our subscription list to the triggered event subscription here. And we're subscribing to a proxy here. So all that does is kind of just cleans out the uh, optional agent that you get from a trigger because you know, that's kind of annoying. So it'll unbox that optional, make sure it's actually a player triggering the trigger, and then it will go through each callback that you've set and call that function. So then there's the subscribe function. This is how you're actually going to get callbacks into your uh, callback array. So all you have to do is just call subscribe and pass it in the function that you want to get called when you trigger the triggers or any one of the triggers really. Then you have the utility functions that were mentioned. They just clean out all of your subscriptions pretty well. So you probably won't need to use those. And then all the same for the button class pretty well. Utility functions, all the same as the last video. If you're interested in those, you can see those in the previous video. Then the currency HUD class. So there's not really that many changes here. Uh, the only real difference is that when we add it to the player, we now load in their old player data. So that way, when you load in, it'll update your UI right when you spawn to make sure it's showing how much currency you had the last time you played. Then in the actual HUD manager, so kind of got rid of the debug buttons in favor of our trigger methods that we defined earlier. So we have an array of those, and we'll look at that UFN in a minute here, just so you can get an idea of what's actually going on. Okay, so in the HUD manager device, the only thing that's really changed is that now we're using a array of trigger methods to grant and remove currency from the player. So what that'll look like is we'll have this on trigger interact function that takes in an agent and a delta currency. So this is kind of the function definition that we talked about earlier that is up in our uh, callback here. So this subscribe that you're passing in this callback function that takes in an agent and a float and returns void, that's exactly this function here, our on trigger interact function. So you can see it takes in an agent and a float and it returns void. And all that does is it casts the agent to a player and then adds currency to that player and then signals that their currency has changed with how much currency we're changing. That is then used in our onBegin function where we go through every trigger method that we defined in our trigger methods array. And we initialize them all, which all that does is call our init function, which subscribes the devices to our proxy functions, which then will call all of our callbacks whenever the trigger device is actually triggered. So then our trigger method dot subscribe is called. So we're now subscribing our trigger method that we're currently iterating over to our on trigger interact function. So we now have this being passed in to the trigger method. So I drew up this quick diagram to help you get a better understanding of kind of how these trigger methods are actually working like visually. So in the case of our trigger method trigger, so using the actual trigger devices, we'll, we'll use that as an example here. So our array of triggers will be kind of these trigger devices here, these three, and We'll start by subscribing them all to our trigger proxy. So you can see that all three subscribe to our proxy, which is this trigger proxy function here, which just calls all of our callback functions every time it's triggered. So every time a player triggers any of these uh, trigger devices, so it can be any of these three, it will call the proxy function, which will then loop through every single callback function that we defined. That can just be any function, really. In our case, it's just the add currency handler. So it'll loop through all of those and call them all. And you can see that here. So anytime the trigger is triggered, it will go and it'll go loop through every callback function we have and call them all with the grant methods currency amount that it's supposed to grant. This is at all confusing. I uh, totally get that. If you want a better explanation of kind of what I'm trying to say here with all of this custom subscriptions and callback functions. There's an excellent video by Mikey Jensen. I will link that in the description below. All right, so over in UFM with our device based out in the world, the first thing you're gonna see is that two kind of uh, fields here, your player spawners and your trigger methods. So your trigger methods are gonna be those that we defined in verse. I've got these examples set up here, but we're gonna remake them for the sake of understanding. So. The two basic examples that I set up for you guys is a button and a trigger for ways to add currency to the player. But really, you can make these anything that you can send a player to. So agent entering events on volumes, pretty much any device that can send an agent as a parameter in a, an event. Just set one of these up 
you can go ahead and add an element to your trigger methods array and you gotta define what type it is. So I only define the button and the trigger types. So we'll start with a button. And then when you select one of those, you'll see you've got two things here. You've got an array of buttons. So per triggering method, you can assign as many devices as you want to that method. So this would be useful if you say had something you wanted to grant just one currency, right? And then you wanted to have 10 different buttons that when you click those, any of those buttons, they grant you one currency. This way you could just dump them all in this button array and they would all grant you one currency. So you do that just by adding a element to the array, using the dropper, select one of your buttons. And then you can go down to this grant method here. So this is where you're gonna choose if the amount of money it's giving is constant or like a random amount in a range. We'll just do constant for this first one and just set the value to one. That's our first one set up. And we'll go ahead and make a second one. And we'll also do this one as a button. And we'll add two button elements this time just to show you how those will work. And we'll select the second and our third button here. And then in our grant method, we will choose a range this time. And we'll choose, let's say, a value between five and 100. So now when you click any of these buttons, it'll give you between five and 100 currency. So those two should be fine. Let's also do an example of a button that will take away currency. So again, select your button trigger method, add a button, use the eyedropper and select it. And then you can go down to your grant method and just set a negative value. So it can just be literally anything and it will take away currency from the player. So those are fine for our button examples. Now let's look at some triggers. So you can just select the trigger method instead and likewise are the same as the button device really. So add your elements. We're gonna do three for each. We'll check the first three triggers here. And we're gonna set these all to just add one currency to the player. And then we're gonna do the same, add another one, another trigger method, and then add a few triggers. You can just use your eyedropper to select them. Set your drop grant method to negative one, as you can see it working. And that's pretty much it. So you can just save and then load up a session and we'll look at those working. All right, there's session loaded. Let's start up the game and check out these buttons and triggers that we set up. So the first one we set was a constant button that I'm supposed to just add one. So as you expect, that's just that. Then the next two were buttons that were supposed to give you a random value in the range that we set. So you can see it's giving some random values. And this last one was supposed to just subtract, I'm pretty sure, yeah, minus 10 every time. And then we had these triggers set up that the right ones would be plus one and the left ones would be minus one. So you can see by running along these that they do just that. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to set up one of these trigger method classes and what that may look like for an arbitrary device. So we're gonna do it with a uh, mutator zones. So it would just be a zone when you enter, it would add currency or when you'd exit, it would do something else, something like that just for example sake. So we'll start by defining the class. We're gonna just call it a trigger method underscore mutator and dumb. And then think about a class and make the parent class a trigger method. Then the first thing we'll have to do is, well, the first thing we'll want really is a our mutator zone. So we can just mix it. Decide. So this is define an array of mutator devices. And just define that, that's an empty array. And you can immediately see we have some errors here. So it's going to complain that we don't have definitions for all of these abstract functions that we're supposed to be defining. So you can see we need to subscribe, a unsubscribe all callbacks, unsubscribe all devices, as well as an init function. So for our init, we're just going to create that and override the init function. And it's going to return void. And all it's going to do is set our subscriptions equal to it's an array of Descriptions. So we'll want our mutator zones here. So we'll want to iterate over each of our mutator zones here. So we can do that just by using a for loop. So we'll go for each mutator zone in mutator zones. We're going to do mutator zone dot agent entered account uh, subscribe. And we're going to just call our um, zone proxy, which we'll create in a moment here. Let's do that right now, actually, just so it's out of the way. So all it's going to do is the GAN agent, type agent, 
return void. And it's just going to go through and call back all of our callbacks functions. All right. And callback dots or just call our kind of callback and pass it on agents as well as on grant my did dot get format. So that's our proxy as well as our init function done. Still complaining though, because we need to define some other things like our subscribe functions. So these are pretty well always the same. So you can just go ahead and copy and paste them from one of the previous defined devices and that should fix it. Okay, this is not a need to uh, an agent entered event. So you can just check the definition here. Agent enters event, of course, it's just some weird little typo. So we have that. And, and uh, there you go. So that's our mutator zone kind of method. And that will just work now. So go back into UFN and you build your Briscoe. You can come down into your device now and you can just add another trigger method. And you should see your mutator zone method now appear. And you select that and you'll see you'll want to attach the mutator zone. So you can just go into your content drawer, Fortnite, devices, uh, just show mute, place one down. I would say make it visible in games. You can actually see it. And then go back down into your manager device and add that mutator zone in and we'll say it's going to grant you ten dollars when you enter it ten currency and that's it so then you can just save push your changes and we'll check that out in the session in a minute here again for example's sake let's define a granting method so this one's kind of probably silly and not nearly useful, but we're going to do it anyway. So let's just do grant method underscore time. It's going to grant you how much time has passed since the server started. So we don't need to define any edit rules for this since the value it's getting is just a verse internal. So what you have to do is define your get amount function, override it, which turns a float. And you're just going to call no, get simulation elapsed time. And that's it. So now every time you all this grant method in one of your trigger methods, it will just give you however much money is equivalent to the amount of time that's passed since the server started. So over in new event, let's create a mutator zone that will give us the amount of time that has passed since the server started as currency when you enter it. So just create another en entry in your trigger methods, choose your mutator zone, go into your mutator zones, add one, select your dropper and pick your mutator zone, go to the grant method, and just change it to be, oh, probably want to build reverse code first. Go into your grant method and then select your time. And then just save that and push your changes and we'll take a look at that one as well. All right, in our session, let's start up our game. Let's take a look at these mutator zones that we created. So the first one is expected to give us uh, like $10 or something. So you walk in and there you go. $10. And this next one is supposed to give us the amount of time that has passed since the service started. So let's check that out. Oh, okay. That's a lot. And it will just keep going up every time you enter it, actually. Quite interesting. I don't think it's inherently useful, but that is one way you could grant your currency to the players, I guess. And we can see that this persists by ending and restarting the game here. We had around like 25k or something. As you can see, I still have it. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, of course, let me know. And uh, yeah, leave a comment. Tell me what you guys want to see next.